Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last part we modeled this moon, and now it's time to UV unwrap it. So let's not waste any time and jump right in. Alright, so here we are back inside of Maya, and let's UV unwrap our spoon. First, I'm going to delete the, those extra spoons we had from the last part and delete this plane. And I'm going to select the spoon and also give it back its Lambert material. It's a little bit easier to see. I'm holding down the right mouse button, going down to assign existing material. I'm going to choose Lambert 1. There we go. And then um, before we UV unwrap it and give it a projection, I'm going to open up the channel box, select the spoon. You can see it still has all this history. Um, what I want to do is select it and delete the history and also freeze the transformation. Also, I'm going to name it. I'm going to call it Spoon. All right. And I'm going to close the channel box. And I'm going to open up the UV editing workspace. Uh, there we go, UV editing. And you can see here's our spoon. Just going to close the modeling toolkit for a second. Um, it should be pinned here on the right for you, though. Um, here's the spoon. Here's the cube projection that it originally had. So I want to give it a planar projection. And I'm going to go up to UV, planar. Could open up the option box. And this is the default. I want to give it a planar projection in the Y, so up and down. I'm going to choose the Y axis. And I'm also going to keep the image width and height ratio, height ratio. And that works best when you freeze the transformations first, which we did. All right, and then we can project it. That'll close the window as well. And now we have our spoon. Looks pretty good. Um, I guess press Q on the keyboard, and then I'm going to go into object mode, just like this object. So here we have um, a projection up and down. Now we just need to um, add a cut. And for now, I'm just going to make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to close that and go back to this one for now. Okay. Um, I'm going to select this edge here, and that's where I want my cut, just all along the edge of that spoon. So I'm going to go to Edge Mode, holding on the right mouse button, go into Edge. You can select it here, but it's hard to see here. I'm going to select it here, double click on that one, and just make sure to grab that loop, which it has. And, and then in this window, hold down the Shift key, hold down the right mouse button, and cut. And that's cut for us, right? Um, you can see now there's a white edge line there if you have uh, this selected. And then let's select the shell. So I'm holding down the right mouse button, go into UV shell, selecting one of these, pressing the W key, and then just moving across. And you can see now we have um, these two shells. And now um, let's turn on um, this second icon, which is, which is shaded, right? Um, shaded mode. And you can see one of them is flipped, right? We don't really want that. So select that shell, go to modify and flip. So that'll flip it back over. So now they're both um, facing the right direction. And then the next thing we want to do is go to the third one, right? And just look and make sure that, um, check the distortion. So we have a little bit of tightness up here. It's hard to see, but there's a little bit, little bit of pink up here, right? So we can unfold these. So select both shells. Go to, uh, not the attribute editor, what am I doing? Um, close that up, go to the UV toolkit, and under unfold, right, we can click unfold. Right. So that unfolds our shells for us, right? And now if we take a look at it, there's um, less pink. So it did a pretty good job of unfolding. Sometimes, depending on the surface, you may need to provide some more cuts so it properly unfolds. However, um, that will add seams. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Um, depending on your how you plan to texture, it might be a non-issue because modeling texturing programs um, can deal pretty well with seams. Um, okay, so we have our shells, they're unfolded. Um, let's see if we can um, arrange them a little bit. Actually, before we arrange, let's check the texel density. So uh, I'm gonna turn off um, the distortion view and I'm gonna turn on the UV checker. That allows us to see the squares, right? They don't look too bad. Um, however, let's check it. So under, I'm gonna close unfold, close arrange. 
I'm opening up Transform, and right here, I'm gonna select one of the shells and get its texel density, which is 108.6270. And then what I can do is just set them both, but I just wanna check it. So I'm gonna get this one as uh, well. Oh, okay, so there's, you can see that's a little bit different. It's pretty minor, probably unnoticeable, but if we wanna make them the same, we can select either shell, get the texel density, and then select all the shells that we have or whatever shells we want to have the same texel density and just set it, right? And now this shell, if I get this one, right, it's the same as this one. There we go. And that gives us some assurance that um, these, the squares are roughly the same. Keeps the texturing a bit more even. Um, okay, so now let's see if we can um, arrange this. So I'm going down, first I'll close transform. I probably don't even need to um, do an arrange here, to tell you the truth, but I'm just gonna orange, orient these. Yeah, it didn't really do much. Okay, so now um, we can manually place these shells in because I think it's probably easier to manu manually do it. But if we do wanna do a layout, select both shells, go to modify layouts. And for something like this, we could probably just, first I'll reset this. I'm gonna give it the option to rotate shells. I don't think it'll do it in this case. Um, and then under shell padding, probably only need like four pixels. If we're doing some procedural texture that um, is, um, let's say some chrome material or something like that, we probably don't even need like a tile padding to tell you the truth or, or even shell padding. But for now, I'll keep give it four and I'll give it a tile padding of four as well. And then I'll lay it out. And there we go, it's laid it out. And that you can tell that it's done a pretty good job. Um, it's kind of kept as straight as possible. We could maximize this space possibly by rotating it, right? But I think for the most part, it should be fine. With something like this, um, one way we can take advantage of the space more is maybe um, adding a cut in here. We'd be introducing another seam, right? But we add a cut in there, and then we could um, take advantage of that space more. Or we can add more objects on the same material. So that's some options. But for the most part, we're done with um, this UV unwrap. I'm just gonna go up to this window and can go back to object mode, select, and our spoon is now unwrapped. Just don't forget to save. So I'm gonna go up here and file. I'm gonna increment and save. All right, and that concludes the UV unwrapping of our spoon. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something new. Um, if you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great one, you guys.